Well, this towel was uh, clean, okay. A uh, little brake cleaner and going up under the thing there, just trying to clean the lip that I'm going to be on. And I'm finally down to just, you know, a little bit of mess. So, I was like, wow, I'm not exactly sure why... Uh, Why it's that dirty, but that was both sides, so they're both pretty good now. Wiped the tops off again. All the dust that I had created and stuff like that, I blew all that off. I got into the oil I had on here, so I wiped all that off again. I still have oil on this piece, so I'm just going to stick it on there for now, just to just to see how it uh, sits. Wow, it's a lot different than it was. Okay, now the question is... Yeah, see, I don't think I want it quite that tight. So I don't know if I should put... Loctite on there. Let me go around and do the other side. Uh, or if I'm supposed to shim it. Uh, I uh, put, the, put the glass scale back up in uh, position. Because I'm not very bright. Okay. Okay, so they're not cranked down. Ooh, man. Hmm. I know I want them snug. Just not sure if I should have that much drag or not. That seems like quite a bit. Yeah, I know it's not supposed to be that stinking tight. Hmm. Well, that feels fine, but this side's completely loose, so. And I don't want it to be just snug because I'm afraid vibration's going to. Uh... Hurt. Now, this should be the, the, the saddle lock. You know, once you tighten that up, then you can't move it. Uh... Let's, uh, let's make sure there's some under the lips here, too, since I made a point to clean those. Still working on the, uh, the 9x20 here, okay. 
Hoping to make some good progress today. We'll see. Uh, so I have it sliding back and forth nicely. I've got a thin film of oil on there. Okay. What I did was uh, these are basically just snug down on this side. That's that's not going to be the final fit. What I did over here was I've been playing with some uh, feeler gauges. And I, I only had enough. I could only clamp down evenly with just the one middle bolt. So the two outside ones are loose. And I have the... Uh, feeler gauges on either side of that bolt, and then I've got that bolt cranked down pretty tight. I've got 16 thousandths of shim in there. Okay, so... What I've been doing is getting a little extra leverage, because just lifting up on this end here, you know, I, I can't really tell. That's not going to even come close to what a cutting force is going to be. So, I could put the pry bar in here and give it enough that it, it starts flexing some stuff but I'm not getting any kind of gap and I don't have uh, I, I, ha I have a nice level of drag there uh, if, if I take the shims out just like on this side there's no shims and I tighten it up just you know even fairly snug oh I cannot move it <laughs> so I'll be shimming both sides today that will be the uh, thing and I got to looking at it too and Something that bothers me is that, uh, see I got playing at this time because I loosened them up too much. Uh, anyway, this is supposed to be an oiler right here. So I got to noticing that there's no oilers anywhere in any of the other stuff here. So that's some, something else I'm going to look at today too is the possibil this is a possibility of... Uh, drilling some holes, possibly adding a channel or two or something like that. Uh, I've got some felt uh, and I'll plug them with felt and that way the oil will drain through but the chips won't. Uh, so yeah this is this is taking way longer than uh, I ever thought or hoped so let's get busy. Yeah I pretty much knew the answer. I hadn't uh, just hadn't paid too much attention to it yet. Uh, I could go in and, and try to clean up all the the roughness. Uh, read a couple things online about how to, you know, glue or tape sandpaper down and run it back and forth and everything like that and get better a fit. Not so sure I'm worried about it that much at this point, but you know, there's no real way for oil to get down into these uh, channels. You know, you got the wipers on either end, so if you squirt it down on the the ways, you just wipe it back off before it actually gets down in here. I want it to get down in here, so I think what we're going to do is we're going to drill a hole and we're going to mill a slot in here. On this one, we're just going to drill a hole because it comes out into a, an opening at the top and it's uh, uh, that'll act as a reservoir and then let the oil drip down the sides. So that's so what we're going to do. So I picked a spot, more or less just eyeballing this halfway the distance from the upper edge here because I have to have a spot on the top side here where it's clear for the hole so I just punched it there as a mark um, so what I'll do is I'll set down with the I picked a two flute um, this should be cast iron it's pretty uh, soft uh, but it's uh, center cutting so I should be able to just kind of plunge down in there a little bit so I'll drill the hole after the fact <clears throat> but I want to go ahead and cut uh, uh, it doesn't have to be too deep, but I want to go ahead and mill a, a pocket, a slot, all the way down there. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, that's machining really nice and clean there. Uh, that's about 80 thousandths deep. I might see if I can just drill the, the hole all the way through.
Well, I'm pretty much out of end mill, so I'll have to finish punching that through. But uh, So I'm going to set it down, and I think I'm only going to set it about 30 thou deep. Uh, so maybe I'll take it in two passes. Um, I had uh, zeroed out the, the Z axis uh, when I touched down. So let's try 15 thou to start with. Okay, I only made it. Uh, I only made it 25 thou deep, and I think that's plenty deep. Uh, and I think that's really all the machine work I need to do on it. You know, there's some cleanup filing and stuff like that. There's some burrs and stuff like that. So I got a little work to do to it, but uh, that's it for the milling. We'll see if this works. I have a little uh, sharpening stone. Looks to be pretty flat and everything like that. I have no idea what grit it is. I need to get the uh, burrs off of the the uh, cut there, the slot. Um, I could probably use a file, but uh, this should be a little less aggressive than the file. And I just put some whey oil down. I didn't put... Uh, Well, it's the edge of the parallel is sharp enough it's catching in other grooves. But it's not catching in the uh, on the edge there. So, I think I'm going to call that good. That didn't, that didn't take much at all. Well, I went ahead and uh, I pulled this bar off and I went ahead and touched it with the stone too. Just to make sure there weren't any burrs. I did it on this side as well and you can see that uh, maybe you can. Um... And so you can see the little highlights around the uh, holes. So that's where the threads were pulling up and it created a high spot. Now I don't plan on having the shims that tight that it would hit that. But, uh, you know, there's also a couple other uh, high spots there. So from dings and, and the edge pushing up stuff like that. So that's all knocked down. So now I can be sure that when I put the shims in there and put that plate on, it's not going to cause the plate to twist. That's why I did it over there too. So... Uh, I think I'll run it back through the parts cleaner real quick and uh, uh, get the debris off from the machine. Oh, I got to finish doing the drilling. I got to drill a hole over here too. Let's do that first. All right. Basically, I just need to uh, finish punching that hole through. And I got plenty of play here. I just need some basic support. Okay. That was pretty darn close. Okay, let's turn it around. Now I'm going to want to put it in that, uh, right in the bottom of that channel there. So I'm not clamping very tight to the, the dovetails up there. Because uh, I really don't want to break them. touching down evenly and basically I'm just gonna eyeball it from the end there I'm sure there's some real machinists out there that are just cringing but <laughs> you know whether it's a thou this way left or right or 10 or 20 half inch you know from the other side it's purely cosmetic it's not functional but I am gonna go ahead and put one on each side because that's a long way for uh, 
you know, the whole boil is going to travel back and forth there. So I'm going to put it on both sides and we'll do that. I can't do it up here on the other side. I can't do it on this side because uh, it's under the way there. <clears throat> or, you know, it's under the, the, uh, the bed. So uh, anyway, it's not going to normally be out where I could see it. So... felt the uh, felt the twist there a little bit. Might have a sharper drill bit somewhere around. <laughs> for that. Never seems to be enough light over here, especially since the uh, the other bright stuff around it. Uh, anyway, I've put uh, one, two, three blocks underneath um, and then clamped it down to the table and I just simply eyeballed it parallel with the table. It's just not that uh, critical. And then I've eyeballed it over the hole. Okay, I did touch off. So now I'm going to drill it down about 125, 150 thousandths. Uh, basically what I'm doing is I'm making a counterbore three-eighths of an inch. Um, and I'm doing that because that tiny-ass little hole there, that's going to be really hard to stuff a piece of felt in. So I want to put in a bigger disc of felt uh, and possibly even be able to maybe like glue it around the edges. Uh, possibly just some super glue just to hold it in there so when I'm blowing on the machine I don't pop them out. Uh, so I want some kind of recess there for a bigger piece of felt. That's what I'm doing. Well, my... The... Quill hit the clamp here. <laughs> so, I'm going to, uh, I only have like another 15 or 20 thou to go, so I'm just going to stick the end mill out a little more. So, I want to go back down in that same hole, so I'm going to zero out the position, but then I need to move it a little bit so I can touch off and get a new zero on my Z. Back to there, now I can go back down. Uh, I guess it's about seven thousandths off at this end, so let's re zero. Yeah, so I should have stopped at 200,000. I went down uh, the 100 thou and then decided, okay, this one is, has a bigger pocket. I can easily go down more because um, I knew that, that the thickness there was a whole lot greater. There's no V coming up to meet the hole. Uh, but, you know, that's the pocket for the screw there. So as long as the screw stays fairly sealed, it shouldn't drip too much oil. But I was hoping to have a bigger hole here so that I could basically have more oil reservoir. Um, oh well. <laughs> 